In this video, I want to show you how I use input booleans, input numbers, and input date times in Home Assistant to make my automation smarter and to improve the user experience. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. What's up everyone? My name is Jeff and this is Slacker Labs, where we look for ways to automate the boring stuff using Home Assistant and Smart Home Tech. If you're into Home Assistant or Smart Home Tech, or you just enjoy listening to a rando on YouTube talk about automating stuff, then click that subscribe button if you haven't already. So the first idea for this video was to talk about what I call kill switches, which I use a lot in my setup. And by kill switch, I mean just having a way to quickly turn off an automation or script when things go wrong, which in my setup is a lot. Like that time I set up an automation that would trigger when the smoke alarm went off. The idea was if the smoke detector went off, I would turn on all the lights in the house and then play the most annoying fire alarm sound I could find throughout the main speakers in the house. I figured if it was the middle of the night and everybody was sleeping, this would be a good way to get everybody up and out of the house. Of course, I didn't consider what would happen if the smoke alarm went off because someone burned the bacon. And let me tell you, trying to quickly find your phone, then fumble through the developer panel in Home Assistant to find the right script to kill all while dealing with burning bacon and your wife that's glaring at you actually I think she was laughing, and the most annoying noise playing in your ear is not easy. It was in that moment that my idea for having more kill switches was born. But then I thought, why not just cover all of the helpers I use, since the root of the kill switch solution is simply improving user experience. So that's what this video is going to be about. If you're new to Home Assistant, or maybe you're just not aware, Home Assistant has seven built-in helpers to help improve building automations. And in no particular order, they are toggles or input booleans, input date times, input numbers, input text, input dropdowns, and counters and timers. But of these seven, I only really use the three that I highlighted in the intro. The first is input booleans. And I use input booleans or toggles as they're called in the Home Assistant UI all over the place. And they're basically just switches that have an on and an off. I have two main purposes for these in my setup. The first purpose for these input booleans is a trigger for an automation or script. For example, any of my alarms, security alarm, fire alarm, or tornado alarm are all tied to an input boolean. For each alarm, I have an automation that's watching for the event that would trigger the alarm. For the tornado alarm, as soon as the National Weather Service issues a tornado warning for our area, an automation turns on the input boolean tied to that alarm. Then an automation triggers when that toggle or input boolean is turned on and sounds the alarm. And then when that input boolean is turned off, there's an automation that kills any scripts playing the audio and stops the media player. If I need to kill the alarm, all it takes is turning off a switch. And to make it even easier, a conditional panel on the Lovelace UI shows any alarms at the top of the page that are currently on, so it's easy to turn them off. The next situation for this is a condition. Every user in my house has a toggle or input boolean for text notifications. So each user gets to choose if they want text notifications. Then in my text notify script for each user, I check to see if the text notifications are on before sending any text. This makes it super easy for someone to turn off notifications if they happen to get spammed all of a sudden because presence detection freaks out and sends 100 notifications that I was home, which has happened before. Hey, you can't build a smart home without breaking some automations. Anyway, to set these up, you can add them to your configuration.yaml under the heading input boolean, then just provide an entity ID friendly name, and an icon if you wish. Or you can go into the helpers panel under configuration and choose add helper, then pick toggle. Then you just have to provide a name and an icon if you would like. The second is input date times. These helpers are basically a way to store a specific date or time. Most of the time, I'm just using it for the time aspect. These guys make setting time-based automations easy. Actually, in my case, it's more about making changing time-based automations really easy. On my Lovelace UI, I have a dashboard for general configuration, and in this, a list of all the automations, and for those that are time-based, I'm able to change the time right there in the UI. This makes it easy to adjust the time that they fire. To set these up, 
You just add them to your configuration.yaml or to a package under the heading input date time. Then you just define an entity name, a friendly name, and then if you want to use the date, you mark it as true and the same for time. As you can see, all of these are just used for time. Or you can create them via the UI in the same helper panel. You just choose date and or time, then give it a name and choose whether this will have date, time, or both. Then if you want to add them as a trigger in an automation, you just use the platform time and set the attribute at to the entity name. In this case, input date time daily report. As you can see, the old way of using these was not that easy. As a bonus, you can set these using an automation as well. For example, I have an automation that sets the time my son's morning alarm goes off. This automation fires at 5.50 every morning, and if the calendar says he has school, then it sets it for 6.15, and if he doesn't, it sets it for 7.15. Just one more way to make the home automation system smarter and require less interaction. And lastly, input numbers. There are two ways I currently use these, and both ways are about getting around limitations I found in Home Assistant. The first way I use these is for adjusting the volume during notifications. I use Amazon Polly for text-to-speech, and I have a speech engine set up that chooses which room to play the notifications in based on some rules I set up. One of those rooms is the living room, which is typically handled by the main audio system. However, if music or something else is playing through that Chromecast tied to that system, I have the speech engine switch to the echo in that room for the notifications. The only problem with this is the echo is usually not loud enough to hear over the main speakers because they're so close to each other. So to solve this, I have a script that turns down the volume on the main system during the notification and then raises it back up. The next problem with this was there was no way for the script to know what the volume was when it turns it back up, so I use an input number. The script that dims the volume saves the current value of the volume to the old volume number and then lowers the volume of the main system. After a delay, it sets the main volume to the value of the old volume number. This provides an easy way to dim the volume and then return the volume to whatever it was at the time. The second situation is light transition. The LED bulbs I use don't have a transition feature, but I wanted to have the master bedroom lights come on gradually over a period of 30 minutes. So I use an input number and some automation to fake it. For this, I created an input number and set the minimum value to 8.5 which I got by dividing 255, which is brightness at 100%, by 30. Then at 6.15 in the morning, as long as vacation mode is off, the script kicks off. This script uses a repeat action so that it repeats the sequence until the value of the input number equals 255 or greater. So for each repeat, it sets the brightness of the bedroom to the value of that input number. Then it calls the increment service to increment that input number, which adds 8.5 to it since I set the step to 8.5, then delays for one minute and starts over. Then when it's all done with that, then it sets the value of the number back to 8.5. This might not be the most elegant solution, but it works and it increases the light in the master bedroom the same percentage over 30 minutes. To set these up, you could use the helper panel and choose number, then give it a name and an icon if you want. Then you will want to give it a minimum value and a max. You'll choose the display mode, which is either slider or input box and then enter the step. This is the increment of change each time the slider is moved or the increment service for that number is called. And if you want a unit of measurement, you can add that as well. In the YAML, you just use the heading input number, set the entity ID, friendly name, initial value, minimum, maximum, and step, just like you did in the UI. Hopefully that gave you some ideas on how to use input booleans, input date times, and input numbers to make your automation smarter and to improve the user experience for you and other people using your setup. Press that like button if you found this useful. Subscribe to my channel for more home automation content if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for taking time out of your home automation projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.